Hey everyone, James from TDB here, bringing you another in between us. So today uh, is going to be kind of a special episode in some ways. Uh, I have been convinced to go into the good old storage cabinet and pick out a tea that I have stored for a long time. I went back and looked at my records. I even revisited the old TDB episode I filmed in 2016 on this tea. And so uh, this tea is the 2014. Da Ching Gushu from Yunnan Sourcing. It's a Jingyu tea. Scott's continued to produce a number of Jingyus throughout the year. This is at, I think, towards the beginning of when he just started to produce a whole lot of Jingyus. He's produced it for even longer than that, but this is when he started to ramp it up to uh, seven or eight, uh, or maybe even more productions per season. So this one's 2014 autumn. Um, and so it was what he described, I think, at the time as his one of his favorites of that batch. And so that's kind of what drew it to me originally. Bought a sample, ended up buying um, two cakes of it. Uh, it's not a tea that I have had, uh, and it's kind of funny revisiting that episode. One thing I do mention is that this is one of the two young teas that I have kept easy access to, this and the Little Walk. Little Walk I have long since finished. This tea actually has gone into much deeper storage and is definitely not one that I revisit regularly. Part of that is because the little walk was a 200 gram thing, didn't make, really make sense to store it uh, longer term. This one I had a couple cakes of, so uh, I have transitioned from a very small amount of young poor drinking to basically very little at all. So that's something kind of funny. Um, and I bought this tea in the summer of 2015 for $65 for a 400 gram cake. Um, so back then, uh, I mean, that was uh, 16 cents per gram. Seems quite cheap at the time. Uh, the tea has since sold out. I just checked. Um, and there are some spring versions. Spring tends to be a little more expensive than autumn. Uh, so I didn't want to compare the price there, but he does have the 2016 version available for $141. So, um, so this is one where, you know, you can feel nice that you paid a much lower cost uh, than what it is available for now. Uh, my initial notes of that session, which was when the tea was, uh, I think just a year, maybe two years old, uh, is that it had uh, a decent amount of bitterness. There was kind of this acorn nut sweetness to it, sugar cane, uh, decent body, big leaves. And that more or less lines up with my memory of these Jingyu teas and stuff like that. So these Jingyu teas, it's an area that's north of Shishuangbana, um, and they kind of do have this unique characteristic to them. Uh, they're they usually don't get kind of the buzz that you're going to get from Menghai County teas or Iwu teas that's just beneath it. Uh, but uh, as far as like the areas north of Shishong Bonago, it's one of the areas that I have enjoyed teas from in the past. I uh, have not had a ton of aged material, a little bit uh, from there. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is partly a test to see how this tea, this material is doing, as well as a test to see how my storage is doing, how the tea has changed how fast it's changing. So those are the things I'm gonna kind of look at at this session. I had a couple steeps uh, of this tea before. I have not pre-screened this tea, so this is my uh, first time tasting this uh, probably in, you know, you know probably uh, I was looking at that and that's like not my previous apartment, but my previous apartment before that. So uh, it was, uh, you know, I, I don't know if I even had this tea at my last apartment. So it's probably been uh, seven, ish years since I've had this, so almost uh, since I made that video, and it's been in my storage uh, for eight years. So in that sense, uh, it has been given ample time. Uh, so we will see how these things have changed. Steep number three right here. I'm gonna boil this water and get steep number four going as well. Um, so yeah, storage checkups are something that I don't do probably as much as I should. I think they'd be interesting content. So if you guys are interested in me revisiting certain teas, seeing how it has gone or just kind of talking about kind of how my own storage and using these teas and excuse to do that let me know uh it's something that i am open to doing uh i tend to not go into this big chonker uh very much but uh it's something that you know it's right here i have pretty easy access to it it's hard for me to pull out stuff that's in deep deep storage but uh you know this one was sitting at the front so i decided hey, why not i mean this uh, kind of fits the criteria um okay so uh, let's get into this. Uh, take a quick smell of these leaves. So I will say the tea still smells quite young. There's a lot of high notes here, floral. It's not unexpected at all. Uh, the storage that I'm gonna be having is certainly, <laughs> it's certainly uncontroversially uh, considered dry storage. Uh, how dry and how slow, uh, I think is a little bit more up to for debate. Um, cheers.
So decent body still. It's still got a kind of a solid bitterness too. I would say that overall it has darkened up. You can still detect those sugarcane notes. Uh, the body's still quite nice. Uh, that's something I do enjoy about it. Um, so I feel like the sugarcane is like maybe 50% evolved into kind of like this wood sugary thing, but it's also accompanied by what you'd expect for like kind of this bitterness. There's a little bit of like fruit muscatel uh, going on. I would say that, uh, you know, the nose smells a fair about higher than the actual taste does. So I would say that it certainly has changed. I, I think this tea is, uh, a lot of the higher notes have been uh, lopped off of the tea and it is starting to get there age-wise. Um, if I were to try this tea blind and not knowing uh, it came from my storage, I would certainly guess it's younger. Um, no surprise there. I mean, we are uh, talking about pretty dry storage here. Um, let me make this uh, next steep, steep number four, and kind of describe how I do store teas. For those of you that haven't seen uh, too many of my storage videos, uh, which you should definitely check out. There's a lot of them. Particularly recommend the poor storage explainer. Uh, yeah, so I store teas uh, unheated. Uh, if you really wanted to push the tea along, I think heated would be a good way to go about it. And I just use good old boba uh, packs to uh, introduce some humidity there. And I usually keep it, uh, I'm shooting for around 65. Uh, sometimes it drops a bit uh, to kind of 60. When it kind of gets into that range, then I do feel the need to kind of inject it with either more recharged boba does or uh, just buy some new Boveda packs and put it there. Um, so you can see the color here, we're kind of brewing this orange red. Uh, I would say that third steep, unsurprisingly, was a little more uh, strong and bitter than the prior two steeps that I had just done. Okay, take another nose of this. So definitely that acorn nut is gone. Uh, it, the sugary floralness is still there. Yeah, I mean, smell-wise, I would say this definitely, uh, <laughs> I would almost mislead me to thinking that the tea is younger than it is uh, when this is in fact almost a nine-year-old tea. Cheers. Uh, another couple things uh, in the good news part. I don't detect anything off about the storage. It is always possible that, you know, everyone has like a certain odor of themselves that they cannot smell. It's possible that stuff is going on in my pour which, you know, if I'm going to drink my own stash, doesn't really matter to me. Uh, but yeah, I don't detect anything off. If, if you were to complain about it, you'd just say that the change is rather slow. Nine years is a long time and the tea has changed. Uh, absolutely. Uh, has it changed a lot? Is this tea kind of dark and kind of in my wheelhouse of things that I would drink regularly? No, certainly not yet. Uh, probably would take at least another nine years, if not longer. Uh, yeah, I mean, the storage is just going to be very slow here uh, without introducing um, uh, something, a lot of heat, uh, or something along those lines. <sighs> hmm. Yeah, this is not bad. Uh, I don't think this is something I would drink regularly yet, but it has bite still. It's got bitterness. I see nothing wrong with the structure of the pour. The body has maintained itself. So I don't think there are any, uh, processing faux pas or anything like that, that have gone wrong with this tea. Texture-wise, is a little bit of minerals, a little floral still, um, but yeah, it's certainly darkened. Um, and I think it does still have uh, kind of the imp uh, to last. Uh, it has, uh, you know, I wouldn't say this is like a top tier aftertaste, but it has some aftertaste that you can uh, sort of enjoy with this. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's see. Why don't we do one last one? Why not? So steep number five. Uh, does not feel anywhere close to kind of dying down. I'm using five grams for uh, uh, 70, 75 milliliters here. Uh, funny enough, it's the same guy one that I was using back then. I, I don't know why, but I was using kind of a cup that you couldn't really see the color uh, and the chow high was blocked. So didn't have a great look at the color, but you can see the color is still uh, fairly on the light end. Um, yeah, and it kind of leaves this nice sort of floral sweetness uh, in the mouth. Uh, yeah. And I do have one other Jingyu tea from Scott that I was aging, the Huangshan. I would expect that to taste uh, fairly similar to this. I do remember that tea, that one spring material from uh, 2015. I expect it to be a little bit uh, stronger potentially in bitterness and, and things like that. I think I, I had a slight, very, very slightly higher opinion of that tea in terms of kind of going the distance. Um, but yeah, I would say these teas 
are probably on something like the 20 year trajectory where maybe I would find them drinkable. It could be even longer than that. Uh, we'll have to see. Uh, trying these teas at, uh, at, at nine years, uh, I would say, yeah, it's coming along. Uh, it certainly still needs a, a lot of time. Cheers. Good minerals uh, to this too. It's got, you know, it kind of has that like interesting resinous factor to it that I am kind of enjoying. It's bringing in those woody notes too. Um, yeah, uh, I, I'd say it's certainly heading in the right direction. Uh, anyways, uh, I'm not going to give this tea a rating. It's just not quite in sort of the uh, right range of uh, like maturity that I would rate a semi-aged tea. I'd say uh, <laughs> if you want to classify this tea as semi-aged, it's on the young side of semi-aged. Uh, absolutely. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. Let me know what you would like to see next. If, you're, if you like this episode, uh, please comment on that. Give it the thumbs up button. And I will see you all next time. Cheers.